And from Ericsson, you know, one of the topics that I, I was interested in learning about, I didn't get a chance to talk to you. Oh, uh, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I always get that, my, my tongue doesn't quite get around that. Yesterday was was network AI. This is a topic that I saw pop up earlier this year, and I'm really curious to, one, what is it? Why does it matter, and what do you do with it, kind of stuff. So I've got Aaron here, who I dragged over from the network AI booth to, to give me the, uh, the layman's 101 on network AI. Aaron, well, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I think you said, uh, what is it? And I think, well, network AI, really, it's an area that, you know, AI, artificial intelligence overall, is an interesting topic among a lot of industries. And so we're applying that in the uh, telecom networks uh, context. So we have we're, we we develop and deploy networks all over the world, and we we have a lot of network data, if you will. So we're we're seeing how can we use this network data and use new technologies like machine learning and artificial intelligence to make more informed, better decisions, both from a Network perspective, network operations perspective, but also from a consumer and consumer experience perspective, okay. and that's what we're demonstrating here. So you're talking machine learning. You're using things like neural nets. Like what? When you, when you, the term AI is pretty uh, much applied to anything involving like data these days. So you know what? What makes it AI for you? Well, so what we're demonstrating on the front here, we've actually got a. It's called Ada, and it's actually a concept where we have a digital assistant. So somebody, let's say it's somebody in the operator, they could actually speak to it like you would Siri or Alexa, and actually interact with this artificial intelligence. And the artificial intelligence has a knowledge database, so it understands what the network is comprised of. In an operational context, it would understand what operational issues the network is facing, and time to this network database, this knowledge database, it can actually make take actions like if the network about to happen or a performance problem, it can actually apply a resolution. Who needs a network administrator anymore? <laughs> I, I think you should call it Ulf and, and, and say, oh, fix, fix my network. Hey, if that's what the, the market that's what I why want. Why not? Why not? Hey, <laughs> absolutely. So, so is so you're removing the need for, for sort of you know guys on pagers to have to worry about sort of you know plugging in and adjusting to things and saying that like, if, if there's a problem, it's proactive. You know, we should be able to handle it before it becomes a, a, a pager you know related activity. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the things, the key message is that 5G is it's it's coming. You got to be ready. And this is one way that really our customers, network operators, need to think about how they're going to change how they do operations, for example. Okay. They can't wait and react to either a subscriber complaining or a network failure. They need to be ahead of the issue, being proactive, like you say, right? Yeah. And so this is one way to maybe put the balance a little bit more and let the machine do the heavy lifting, if you will. There's still going to be a need for some human interaction. Uh, in fact, the demo that I'm showing is called Radio Site Analytics, and that's exactly, we have an, uh, an approach where we have human ingenuity combined with the power of the machine the artificial intelligence so that we can tackle the challenge the real challenges that we face in the network that's it it's really interesting so yeah. you're so you're you're applying you know the, the sort of benefits to AI the, the human sort of interface you know spoken type of things, and allowing you to more effectively manage a kind of proactive network it's, it sounds pretty cool yep. so who, who's using it? Big, big telecom providers yeah, so obviously, you know, it's a, uh, a new area, and so we do have friendly customers that are using this, and so we're exploring together with them, you know, how does this work in practice, what are the benefits of this, I mean, there are certainly benefits, but we're exploring that and quantifying those benefits, so we do believe, like I said, 5G is coming, it requires a change in technology, of course, the technology change is coming, but also from an operational standpoint, change is needed, so we're exploring, you know, what that really means in practical terms. So. Just, I don't know if this is your department or not, but I was curious. I hear a lot of this 5G is coming, and to me, it just seems like a faster version of 4G. Am I missing something? Like, what? What's so exciting about 5G? Is it, you know, 3G was slower than 4, you know, 4G, and it, I, to me, it's just like an incremental speed increase. Yes. Coverage. So yeah. that's a great question, and I think the reason you have that perception is because that's what 4G was. 4G was about broadband going mobile. Yeah. In 5G, it completely changes. So yes, there will be faster broadband in 5G, but that's only one element. What's happening now is that you know things are being connected. So we talk about IoT as another area here. Yeah. Now we've got machines being connected, and those machines may be doing different tasks. One task may require very, very low latency. Right. So if I'm a doctor and I'm doing a remote surgery, I need to make sure that my latency is very, very low. It may not be so much of a bandwidth issue, it's more of a latency issue. So in 5G, so like the network is designed to, to give specific use case 
It's a segmentation. Yeah, it's segmented for different use cases. Okay. And that's what 5G brings. And so it's really, it goes beyond just faster speeds into a whole other, better connectivity, better power consumption. Well, I think the power consumption is a huge yeah. one because 4G is a, is a huge drain. I'm, we're broadcasting on LTE right now. And, you know, this is the only way to get, you know, guaranteed bandwidth in an event. Yep. And one of the challenges with LTE is it just drains the battery, especially when I'm doing a video. Yep. Um, you know, I'd like to be able to have, you know, something that doesn't works for more than three or four hours. You know, if, if I'm doing a, a 4K broadcast, but the battery's yep. down. And I, I can imagine if you've got some IoT devices sitting there pinging every, you know, X amount of seconds, it's gonna drain the battery pretty quick. So I, I would guess you probably wanna use like 2G or something if you had an IoT you had a device. Yeah, so in 5G, exactly. What we'd be able to do is the network would be smart and we'd be able to allocate the right type of usage for the right type of use case. So in your case, if it's about power saving and, you know, low, well, for me, it's just two, two things. But up, upload. Yeah. I, I don't really care about download. We're, we're broadcasting to Twitter right now. I, I need I need as much throughput to Twitter to, to you know so, so we have a nice clean quality you know signal. And two, I don't, don't want to run out of battery after my third interview. Yeah. So in this case, let's say you have a, a mobile operator that's providing you service, a 5G service. They would be able to offer you a very tailored slice, if you will, service experience that would be tailored to your needs. So in this case, I want to have fantastic upload. And I want low bandwidth consumption. I want these various things. I mean, these are areas we're exploring. Yeah. Right. And and what's exciting is we don't know quite yet what how this is going to play out, but we know it's going to be, you know, major major shift. And so what we're saying is that's coming. We need to prepare now. Let's start exploring together now what, what this really means, and so that we're ready for it. So how far are we? You know, is, is the next iPhone going to be five G? You know, like are, are, is it you know practical in the near term? Or well, there's a whole ecosystem, right? I mean, we we do networks, and obviously there's devices. That, and, and obviously the network itself. So, you know, there's lots of aspects. As, as far as standardization, if you will, to make sure everything works together, which is extremely important, that's still being done as far as 5G. And that's coming, I think, in 2019, maybe even earlier. So, okay. the standardization. However, so the, the experimentation. The 11. Experimentation is happening. In fact, one of the things we have, we actually have a 5G base station up in the corner. It's transmitting to a device, and these guys are doing uh, virtual reality gaming. So there's two two guys that are doing a virtual game with each other. They're doing that over the 5G radio link. So, so it's here to experiment. It's not commercially launched. In standard is here. And that's, if you, if you guys, I'm not sure if you see Yeah, here. we have a 5G. We'll turn the right camera. Here. Oh, you can see it over here. Yeah, the blue one there. Yeah, the yeah. 5G. Yeah. So, you know, there, there's been a lot of talk of this, of running thing in the cloud, you know, the you know, does a car need to do all the processing internally? The idea of running a car in the cloud remotely scares the hell out of me, but I can see a gaming environment where, you know, a lot of the, the complex, you know, gaming components don't need to be run on the device itself. It certainly makes a lot of sense. I think that makes a lot of sense for a whole variety of industries. Yeah, so, and that's, that's the other thing about 5G is it, there will be more, if you will, usage of the cloud. So a lot of the physical, uh, what is today physical equipment would actually be separated and from a software standpoint be put into a cloud. So the idea would be that as I give you your network slice for your specific purposes, I can spin up an instance that today would be physical but could be just software in a cloud and, and deliver your experience at a much lower cost, okay. much faster, and... And that's, with, that's slice, is that like a... Like a VPN, uh, yeah, of sorts. It's, it's, it's a SDN sort of type of it's segmentation. A, it's, it's a usage of the network for a specific purpose. Let's I, say that. So you're so you're basically giving sort of a, a a piece that says you get this much access. Yeah, you, this is your slice, and you would you know pay whatever that slice would be for your purpose, and you would get your user experience. Yeah. If you're a consumer or if you're an enterprise, whatever that is, that the slice would be tailored for the user experience that you're signing up for. Sure. And that can coexist on the same network, and that's what 5G enables. So it's, it's not just, like you said, broadband, mobile broadband, which of course is what 4G is. It's so much more, and that's being explored now. So there's a whole world of opportunities. Oh, sort of yeah. We, we see that as a huge, huge shift. I mean, you talk about the industrial revolution, or revolution right, manufacturing. 5G is going to bring a whole new, you know, connected things being used in new ways. That yeah. It's really exciting, actually. What, what, what comes after 5G? <laughs> I have 6G, obviously. But well, I, what's 6G? Like, you know, my neural net, my brain that connects directly to... <laughs> well, you know, it, back to the network AI, right? I mean, you know... 
obviously machines will be doing, doing more and more things. There'll still be a role for humans to do because, like I said, in this applied. I don't think there's a role for humans. Oh I, no, no, I, no, there I, is. I think there I'm going to sit back on, on on my dock and chill while my AI do, you know runs the world for me. Well, I think I, that's true. The AI may do the the mundane tasks, but as humans, we just you know the repetitive things that they can do. They, they can do faster, more effectively, more efficiently. But the human still has to have the ingenuity, right? We still have to be creative and think about what the what the next thing is. So we're, we can focus on sort of higher level fun. Yes. What, rather than lower well, level. The Maslow hierarchy needs what we've moved yeah. up. Yeah. So I, I like the idea of having an, an AI that does the stuff that I don't want to do. Exactly. You know, if, if, if it can figure out how to take out the garbage and, and mow the lawn, I'm good to go. I think the mow the lawn is actually pretty close. Yeah, well, so next example. We went to uh, T-Mobile, had this IoT uh, gathering yesterday, and they were serving hors d'oeuvres and wonderful they had robots that were coming and, and delivering the uh, the drinks, and you could put your you know used drink on the. On the as in this. Wow. I don't want to do. I don't want to walk around holding a tray all day. Yeah, but, it, you know, it, it does. It does do open it. up a you know a, a, a societal question mark for the uh, large portion of the population that does work in service-based industries. But that's a conversation for another time. Uh, thanks, yeah, yeah. thanks for uh, coming on the show. I, I really appreciate it. Um, if, you, if you're here in San Francisco and you're interested in learning about networking AI, 5G, and related technologies, stop by the Ericsson booth. Some pretty cool stuff going on.